EEV presents Portable Wood Power Tools 2. Safety, Operation, and Identification. A video active presentation. The goal of Portable Wood Power Tools 2 is to familiarize the viewer with basic safety, operation, and identification of common power tools, routers, hand drills, and reciprocating saws. Therefore, the objectives are to learn the proper safety precautions associated with each tool, to learn the correct operation of common portable woodworking power tools, to identify each tool discussed, and to understand its appropriate use. Portable Wood Power Tools 2 is divided into four sections. Following each section, a series of review questions will be presented. Answers are provided in the teacher's key. You may stop the program to discuss a topic or to allow more time to answer questions. Since the invention of the wheel, people have been searching for more convenient, simple ways to make their work a little easier. That is why millions of contraptions fill the toolboxes of the world. But these handy devices can be dangerous when misused. Each year, more than 600,000 people in North America require hospital treatment for accidents involving the misuse of tools. Most of these accidents are caused by human error. By learning the proper function and the correct operation of our tools, we can finish our projects faster and in a safer way. Dr. David Lawver is a nationally acclaimed safety expert and is an associate professor at Texas Tech University. Dr. Lawver has more than 20 years experience in education and mechanization and has taught at both the high school and college levels. Bob Herman has been working with professional shop and woodworking tools for more than 30 years. He has represented leading tool manufacturers and has demonstrated their tools across the country. Together, these two experts bring over 50 years experience in order to aid viewers in identifying and safely operating common tools. The first thing to, to always remember is to always wear eye protection of some sort. I have safety glasses on. Bob has safety glasses on. I assure you that we always wear safety glasses when we use these tools. It's very important. Even though Bob Herman's glasses look like regular prescription glasses, they are OSHA approved Z87 prescription safety lenses. Remember, regular prescription glasses do not provide adequate protection from flying debris and may even shatter on impact, creating sharp fragments which can seriously injure the eyes. When you're using power woodworking tools, you are dealing with sharp cutting edges, and these edges will cut flesh as well. And so always make sure to pay attention to what you're doing. Keep your hands well away from the cutting edge. Other things to remember is that you are working with electricity, and power cords sometimes become damaged. We want to make sure that we use tools only with power cords that are in good shape so that you don't have stray electricity. It's recommended that you not wear jewelry and that you uh, not have loose clothing as well. So even though we have long sleeve shirts on, we do have the cuffs button just to make sure that we don't have a safety hazard. Always pay attention to what you're doing and always pay attention to what others around you are doing so that you, uh, so that you don't experience a, an injury or some sort of accident while, while using these tools. Portable routers have several basic external features. Typically, there are two handles to guide the router, some kind of housing which covers the motor, an electric cord to power the motor, a trigger switch which activates the router, a depth adjustment and sub-base which allows for precision cutting and edging, and a chuck which holds and spins the router bit. A router is a tool that uh holds the uh, router bit or cutter and it spins in a circular motion and we use it primarily to do edge treatments on wood, uh, does a lot of other things. I think uh, one of the most important things to remember uh, 
about a router is its versatility by virtue of the variety of bits that we can use. Primarily, we have two basic styles of bits. We have one here with the bearing on it that is the guide, which are used strictly on the edge of a piece of material. This one is a Roman OG for making different cuts. The other basic style bit we have is just a plain cutter. This one is a straight three quarter inch cutter. It must be used with some kind of an edge guide, either in a table mounted router or in a portable router. These come with the router or are an accessory option with the router. Place the uh, tool up against the edge of the material and then slide it along the material to make your cut. Uh, we use these with cutters uh, that don't have the ball bearing guides in it. And of course we have, we can adjust the, uh, the fence here in any position that we need to, to uh, guide your, your tool along the edge of a piece of material to make your cut. You also have a router that's mounted upside down in this table. This one is mounted, uh, what we call a table mounted router. Uh, most woodworkers have used this style uh, uh, kind of in place of the shaper. Uh, here I have, I have the same basic router. I have a three horsepower Makita mounted in here. And this one has a ball bearing guide on it presently. If we don't use the ball bearing guide then on this kind of a uh, uh, cutter with the table mounted, then we use our fence set up to align the material with the edge of the fence uh, in relation to the cutter so we can get whatever type of cut we want to do. Always feed the material uh, against the rotation of the cutter. Uh, this is an important factor in, uh, in using routers as well as other rotary type tools that you feed your material opposite the direction of rotation. This bit is going counterclockwise. So we always feed from the left side then the material is always on the left side of the cutter. Right, and a table mounted router, that would be correct. Uh, when we turn the router up this way, we got just the opposite situation then. And we would be uh, going along the right side because of the rotation of the cutter. These are cuts that were done with the uh, ball bearing cutters. This first cut here is done with a round over cutter like this one here. We can use it like this, or we can do this same basic cut without this top lip on it. So it does two different things with this round over bit. And the, uh, the next cuts then, uh, tell me about those. This cut here is cut with the Roman OG cutter. It does a multiple of different cuts, again, with the ball bearing guide. So it is done and used on the edge of a piece of material. The first one was with the cutter in its uh, full down position. And so you can move the cutter up and down in reference to the base of the router and vary the kind of cut that you... That's that correct. Achieved. Here we had it in a full down position and had the cove and the round over with the little lip. Here we've got it done with the cove and the round over without the lip. Moving the cutter in the uh, router will achieve this. Now the third cut we have here is with the same cutter with just the cove cut in the in the side of the material. So we have just a small amount of the bit exposed then uh, in the router. That's correct. Remember any wood cutting bits, particularly router bits, as they get dull they're harder to feed material and they also get noisy so if you'll pay attention to those two things you can recognize when you need to sharpen or replace them. Tell us a little bit about the routers and different features that you might look for. Okay, David, this is one of my newer routers. Uh, this one is a plunge base, uh, variable speed. The newer routers, most of them have the uh, soft start feature on them, which is a real nice addition to the router. The plunge router is a nice tool because when you're not making your cut, the cutter is up above the base so the router can sit down flat on the table and not interfere with anything. And in operation, the router is pushed down, has a locking mechanism so you can lock it in a down position. It is adjustable so that you can put uh, different heights in uh, and then quickly select between them. Older style routers are what we call a fixed base router. The adjustment on it is a little more complicated and not quite so accurate. There's not an easy way to adjust the uh, cutter back up 
above the table. So when you're done using this router, we generally set them down in this position. Of course, that allows for the sharp cutter to be spinning down below the base. It would be a good idea to make sure that the router has stopped spinning before you set it down. With the plunge base routers, it's probably not as important, uh, but still we have a spinning cutter. Routers turn somewhere between 22,000 and 25,000 RPM. Uh, so there's a lot of activity there. Most portable electric drills have several basic external features. Usually, there is a pistol grip handle, a trigger switch which activates the drill, some sort of housing which covers the motor, a battery pack, or an electric cord that supplies power to the motor, and a chuck which holds and spins the drill bit. Bob, uh, we're going to talk about power drill motors and power screwdrivers, but I see that we have some other tools here that, that precede some of those. I have a variety of different tools here. We look at the first cordless screwdrivers. We don't normally think of those as cordless screwdrivers today, but uh, they are predecessors to what we commonly use in the fields today. Some of these early drills like this, uh, this Yankee screwdriver, it's a ratcheting tool where you move the handle up and down and it turns the bit. So you do get some advantage. It is more than just a regular screwdriver. It does have some automatic and some some power features to it. They'll drive screws in, turn mm -hmm. screws out. Going from this tool to this tool, this was a real wonder. We were really glad to see these here. And of course, now we've got the electric motors, both corded and cordless, so that most of our cordless tools now we think of being a, a powered tool rather than the operator supplying the power. Let's move in then to the, some of the cordless tools and the corded tools like we think about today then. This is a uh, double insulated, 3 8 inch geared chuck drill motor. A heavy duty tool, we we'll use that for a lot of different drilling operations. Here's another one, 3 8 inch chuck. Now when you say a 3 8 inch chuck, uh, what you're really saying is we have to make sure that all the drill bits that we purchase have a 3 8 or less shank in so that we can use it in our drill. They make drill motors with uh, bigger chucks uh, mm -hmm. for specialized operations. For instance, I think you have a half inch chuck. That, that would be correct, David. Now this is a uh, half inch chuck, a very heavy duty drill motor. It runs at 450 RPMs for uh, drilling big holes. Mm -hmm. A lot of torque on that. Lots huh? of torque, yes. Uh -huh. These run faster and not so much torque. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the newer tools are all going to be variable speed. This is an older model here. It's just an on and off. You have forward and reverse. We'll use them with a large auger type bits, which is heavy duty drawing. Now we have three examples of cordless drill motors. We have battery operated 9.6 volt, maximum 3 8 capacity. Uh, this motor here is, is a two speed model. It also has a clutch, which is uh, useful for driving screws. We advance from there into uh, uh, the other cordless tools, again, battery operated, 3 8 inch chuck. This has the newer, what we call a keyless chucks, which you don't require the little key to put the bits in. Verbal speed, which uh, makes screw driving amazingly simple compared to a single speed tool. Mm -hmm. uh, have another model here, keyless chuck, verbal selected clutches on them for driving screws forward and reverse, gear selectable speed ranges, a high and a low range. So they give you a lot of versatility. You can get to, in the low range, you get a lot of torque mm -hmm. with it for driving heavy screws or maybe drilling uh, with larger drill bits. You have one more uh, drill motor that we need to talk about. That one looks heavy duty. This is a heavy duty tool. This is a half inch geared key chuck hammer drill. It's selectable here with our, our sleeve for doing hammer operations. We can select it for drilling masonry. If you're going to drill a hole in concrete, then you use a masonry bit and then set it so that the hammer feature of the drill is activated. So you not only get the turning of the bit, you also get a uh, uh, impact with the bit. Bob, I see that we have uh, just a multitude of uh, drill bits here. 
I have drill bits for uh, drilling wood, steel.